Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen, to Global Impromptu Speaking Session number 167. Thank you so much for joining in today. Today, you are going to face the fear that is known as Tosmas Omar, engulfing Tosmas Omar. And he will definitely going to help you give you a good topic, a simple topic, so you can speak confidently. End of the day, it does not matter how good you speak, but end of the day, when you speak, you know next time what to speak, what not to speak, at least. Ladies and gentlemen, today to support Toastmaster Umar Farooq, we have Toastmaster Sujit J, who will be time managing our time. And uh, let's give a well, let's put our hands together to welcome Toastmaster Sujit to explain the timing mechanism. Toastmaster Sujit, over to you to explain the timing mechanism. Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to all the impromptu speaker from all over the world. My role as a timer is to time the meeting of all the speeches. So generally the time allotted is for a table topic session is from one minute to two minutes. And after the end of the one minute, I'll show green card, which you can see as a background of my you know, uh, screen. And from one to uh, from one to two minutes, I will show yellow card. And after two minutes, I'll show red card. And within thirty seconds, the speaker has to wrap up the speech. And uh, I'll timing the speech. And uh, you can pin me in the chat while speaking so that you know uh, my screen is visible to you. Uh, thank you. Over to you, Toastmaster Amjad. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Jeet Jay. I really appreciate for uh, chipping in and helping us out to manage the time. Ladies and gentlemen, today you have two options. Whether you will be engulfed by Toastmaster Umar with his topic, or you can engulf his topic with your amazing answer. Let's see what happens. We will find out after one hour. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome Toastmaster Umar Farooq as the host and the topics master. Thank Over you, Dijan Jeet, uh, for the introduction. Today, the theme of the topics is you. I will be trying to know you in my own way, in my own spiritual, philosophical way. Right? Some deep questions, very easy to answer. One of the easiest sessions that I created up till now. So everybody can answer in an easy way. You have to tell me what is your answer, then you have to explain it in a bit. So let's start with Dr. Farida. So, Dr. Farida, the word of the day is engulf. Okay. So, Dr. Farida, your topic is what are you holding on to that you need to let go of? What are you holding on to that you need to let go of? I'll put it in the chat also. A very good evening to my global impromptu family members. The topic that has been given to me is what are you holding on to that you need to let go of? The TM Umar is making an attempt to have insight into the personalities of the mem members of global impromptu family. And this is an excellent question for it. I am going to tell you guys a fact. I let go of things very easily. I have, I'm right now in the sixth decade of my life and I have moved homes or cities four times. So this in itself tells a lot. And during this process, I have let go of relationships, of worldly possessions, of homes, of cars, of friendships, of uh, many other things. So this is the process that has been kept uh, kept me going throughout throughout my life. And let me tell you this, that every time you let go of something does not mean that that thing has disappeared from your life completely. It is there, it's a part of your life. It has played an important role in your past. And so it, it helps you to build on something better that you will acquire in the future. There was a time when I had a Suzuki Bolan. And that was the first car that I brought, bought with my own hard earnings. It was the most 
prized possession. I still remember I used to not let the servant touch it or clean it. I used to wash it myself. I used to fill the air in the tire myself, which is a big deal in Pakistan, by the way. And uh, I used to do everything. I used to care for it, clean the cushions, wipe everything. I used to keep the mats ready and happening all the time. And I used to engulf it with my love and care. Lo and behold, that love did not last a year even. Within a year, I sold it. I graduated to a Pajero and then I super graduated straight, straight to a Prado, which is the usual for doctors to drive in that area because, of, because it's a hilly area where I lived. So that is what life is. When you acquire new things, you let go of your old things, definitely. You make new friends, your old friends are there somewhere in the past. They are, you, you value their friendships, but you have to let go of them in order to make space for the new friends. Now that you, I have global impromptu family taking over one hour of my time three times a day, three times a week, which is Wednesdays, Sundays, and Fridays, definitely, which I used to Zoom meet or to WhatsApp call with some of my other friends. So this is how life is. You take on new relationships, you let go of some old ones or you give lesser time to them. But that does not really mean that those things vanish from your life completely. They have come into your life to play a part. They have played their part and they have left in order to make space for new and more exciting things. This is how life is. I do not advise any of you to hang on to old things, old possessions, old relationships and cling on to them and do not open your heart or make space in your heart for new ventures, more exciting things, more exciting relationships, more fascinations in life. I do not. I advise all of you to let go of the past in order to inhale the future. A very good evening to all of you. Wonderful thoughts, uh, Dr. Farida. It was a mini speech in itself, you can, I can say. And but don't let us let us go off easily, huh? <laughs> Our glow, your global glow to family. <laughs> okay, so next is Sushant. Sushant. Am I audible? Yes, Sushant, you are audible. So I have an easy question for you. Okay. Yeah. So where do you find inspiration? Where do you find inspiration? Sushant. That's even topic master for that particular apt question. Where do I find my inspiration? Indeed, it's my failures. Because what I've learned in my life till now is that whenever we succeed in something, we get fixed with it. Okay, we can do better in this. We don't need to improve ourselves. So that we just keep on moving without noticing down the mistakes what we made. But when you did a failure instead of success, you would stop there. You would stop and think, why did I fail for this? What was the thing lacking in me to, to get hold of that particular place? That's where you do the homework. And that's how you get inspired and you succeed in everything else. You gotta put a homework. So you win or lose, it doesn't matter. The only thing is that do you do homework to the last thing? Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Even I'm a real example, good example for that indeed. Sometimes I lose, but I don't do much homework. It is everyone's thing. Everyone will do like this, but it is really needed to do a homework so that we can know why did I lack? Everyone can do anything, right? But why didn't we do that? There should be reason. And you need to say, we are the reason for it. So if we are the reason, what do we need to practice to bring it out, to win it? And that's what we need to do the homework. And you need to say, my failures are my inspiration. Over the table topic master. Oh, wonderful. The junior motivational speaker, Sushant. Great. A wonderful attempt. So we have Jesse, ma'am. Yes. Jesse, ma'am, I have a good question for you. So your topic is, are you servant of money or does money serve you? Are you servant of money or does money serve you? Jesse, ma'am. 
Hello, Toastmasters of Global Family. Servant of money or money is my servant. When I become servant, then I surrender to money and uh, I, I be I, at the mercy of money. I might do anything. But if money is my servant, I am the owner of the money and I know where to spend, how to spend, uh, where I can get the maximum value of uh, uh, money for uh, value for money for me. So we need to be the master of money and employ money where we can <coughs> get the maximum. Now, to give you an example, there are people um, strive, uh, you know, there's uh, scams that come uh, nowadays. <coughs> you have one, uh, I have 100,000, I have no one, to, especially from South Africa or African countries. I've got so much of money, I don't know what to do. Do you want some part of it? Then if I was the servant of money, probably I would have given, yes, yes, I want, let me know how it is. But if I know, that the the reason behind i know why people are giving away money like that if he's really want that money how money can be spent then he will put that money to better use so always know the reason behind uh, somebody offers money or you run behind money particularly there are scheme offering good uh, interest on uh, 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 on your uh, deposit no something is offered free don't become the slave of uh, uh, wealth. Use your wealth and see that you be, be the owner of your wealth and recreate and see that you are always in control of money. So I am not for money. Money should work for me as long as I can. I'm the owner of the money. Over to you. Uh, wonderful answer, Jessica. Yes, uh, we should not be slave of the money. Money should be our slave. But you know, nowadays we see a lot of we becoming slaves, we following it. So sadly. So next we have Hishik, what is Hirikesh? No, Rishikesh. Hirishikesh. Rishikesh, are you there? Rishikesh, you are there? He is unmute, but he's not speaking. And he is not there, no issues. So move to another person. Meanwhile, Unit has asked to be called on after 20 minutes. So I'll call Madhuri. Madhuri, you are next. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Madhuri, your topic is if your life was made into a movie, the title would be uh, if your life was made into a movie, your the title of the movie would be what and why? I put it in the chat. Okay, that's an interesting question. Uh, so very recently, I was thinking uh, when I introspected my past one year, uh, I didn't know that I would meet uh, Toastmasters virtually and that too from uh, a lot of different countries and it would not happen if I would not have joined Toastmasters. So when I introspected all this, I understood how undescribable life is. So if my life would be a movie, that my life or anyone's life would be a movie, then the title for sure would be undescribable because uh, we never know what is going to happen tomorrow. It could be life is a whole uh, full of surprises and it's never a Oh, it's never always a bed of full of roses. You could be going through a lot, some happy moments uh, and so many uh, sad incidents which are going to make you very stronger. Uh, but one thing which we all have to remember, uh, no matter whatever we face, is everything happens for a reason and we need to go through, grow through whatever we go through. So life is just so undescribable and be strong enough to face any kind of situation uh, be it your personal or professional, uh, just um, make sure you are going to become better every single day. And life is just so undescribable. Maybe uh, something might not happen, whatever you're expecting today, because as I said, it's just so undescribable. Uh, just be strong enough to face it. This is what I learned through my life. And uh, whatever decision you take uh, 
today might not reflect you, but uh, that doesn't mean you should stop uh, taking good decisions or doing good work. Just keep up the same good work, the uh, same you be more empathetic and kind to people. Thank you. Interesting answer. Undescribable life. Huh? <laughs> My life title or my movie title would be Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. So next we have Saurabh. Saurabh is gone. I think he's not. I cannot see him. And we don't have. We have Sherman, sir. Sherman, sir, is not here? Nako Mojuda. Okay, Sherman sir is not here. Aniket. Aniket is there? Okay. Everybody is so scared. I don't know why they are running away. <laughs> they are locked in the door. He's unmuted. Are... I can see him. He's unmuted. Oh. Aniket is unmuted. I cannot hear him. Aniket? Okay. I think he hasn't connected his audio. Uh, Aniket, can you? Okay, no issues. So let's move to another one. Meanwhile, if the issue is there. Babu, are you there? Yes, I have not yet run away. <laughs> okay. So your topic is, what was it that you never told someone and still regret not telling them? What is something that you did not tell anybody? Okay. What was it that you never told someone you still regret not telling them? I'll put it in the chat. It was the month of uh, November 2013 when my uh, grandfather passed away. From my early childhood, I have uh, seen him, although uh, we do not uh, sometimes used to live uh, together, but uh, after uh, growing at a certain age, that is uh, uh, when I have become adult, he has uh, shifted to our place and has uh, started uh, living with us. Around, 10 years, he stayed with me. But I do not remember a single instant that uh, I have uh, told him that uh, how I feel for him. Although whenever he used to ask me anything, I used to do it without any question. I used to ask him suggestions on various things. I used to take it, but I never said him, thank you. Yes, in our family, we never say it and others also do not expect that they will say thank you if uh, uh, the, there is a relationship of a grandfather and a grandson or a father and a son. But uh, when he passed away, I did not know that uh, what happened, but uh, I still remember that though I was crying that day, but uh, still I wanted to say him and wanted to confess him that uh, how much I used to care for him. I always uh, find that thing very regretful to, for myself and I still regret it. And I would like to suggest uh, to those that uh, whom you care for, if uh, they are there with you, then uh, do not procrastinate, and especially if they are getting old uh, day by day. So please uh, tell them your feelings. It might not uh, give them comfort, but it will give yourself a peace of mind and with that is very necessary when they will not be there with you anymore you will not regret for yourself thank you and back to the one a wonderful answer babu you related to your own life great i always say that what cannot be said will be wept so whatever it is you want to say to someone say it before it's too late so next we have uh, tawos tawos are you there Today I'm asking very simple questions, engulfing yes, questions, engulfing questions to everybody to know them better insight. Let's see. So Tavos, you are audible? Audible. yes, you are audible. Not we cannot see you. 
you want to okay. be, you don't want to be seen actually uh, it is uh, raining here in uh, sialkot okay mafistan and thanks to the load sharing okay no issue no <laughs> issue no issue we'll give you the topic so very simple topic how you can simplify your life how you can actually, simplify your hmm. life covers tell me uh, sir um uh, first of all uh, assalamu alaikum to all of you i am a new here and uh, so uh, you know engulfed in the sudden bombardment of thoughts um by the uh, by hearing my topic so how would i simplify my life you know uh, there is a proverb in punjabi that sochi pyaat banda gaya so you have to think you uh, you have to think less and less you have to uh, uh you know forget the undesirable memories you have to make your mind uh, as clean and as pure as possible so i think this will uh, make your life simple and if you uh, have uh, thoughts that are uh, you know not good that are not according to the morality or that will uh, oppress you or that will suppress you so that kind of thoughts will make you grow worse and worse so i think uh, that uh, as a student of uh, philosophy uh, the more uh, as sigmund freud one of the leading psychoanalysts he said that the more pressure you build on your unconscious the more you will get nervous the more will you get anxiety and the more you suffer so i think uh, we need to uh, calm our unconscious as well as conscious to live a better life and to have uh, a simplify life i was simple life so that's all from my side it's good to hear from all of you thank you toast wonderful thought and i agree says overthinking a lot of thoughts that we have negative thoughts can complicate our lives so true so now we have mohammad hasan with us mohammad hasan interesting question for you so so mohammad hasan your to- uh, question is how often have you said yes when you want to say no and why how often have you said yes when you so went wanted to say no and why hasan tell us tell us about that uh, hello everyone uh, this is mohammad hasan so uh, my topic is how of, how often i have said no uh, how often i have said yes when i wanted to say no actually uh, with me the thing is i cannot say no to anyone uh, and that's the biggest problem that um, i face i actually cannot say anyone to uh, i actually cannot say no to anyone because uh, even when i uh, even when i am in trouble or i have some really important work or anything like that anything going on in my life i actually cannot say no so that's the biggest problem that uh, i face and i really want to overcome this uh, and i really actually want to overcome the problem that i cannot say no to anyone someone uh, someone said actually uh, my uncle from he is from dehradun so he said uh, he told me one thing that try to say no try to say no to anything that you cannot do or that will make you in trouble or whatever the thing is just try to say no and uh, i just remember that thing but i cannot say no to anyone i really cannot say no that's all from my side thing interesting thoughts mama it was a interesting question as well and even the europeans and americans have written book on the art of saying no it's an entire book how to say no so it's a skill and we should learn so so otherwise we will be used a lot So next, so next we have Noman Lagari from Hyderabad, Sindh. Yes, 
Karumar. Yeah. Yeah. Naman, your topic is what is the most challenging experience you have overcome in last five years? What is the most challenging experience you have overcome in the last five years? Tell us about that. Yes. Uh, what is the most challenging experience that I have overcome in last five years? So it is uh, the, uh, the the one and only problem which everybody have in, in, in our life, which is public speaking. Uh, from the beginning of my uh, uh, education career, I was not that much, uh, you know, uh, good at public speaking. I used to shy a lot. Even I do not used to talk uh, with my with my mother and with my family. If somebody, uh, you know, elders are sitting uh, and having get together, but I used to, you know, hide myself from them and uh, uh, watching TV or watching cricket matches and playing cricket as well. But uh, uh, with the passage of time, I had realized that I should have to, you know, uh, show my uh, show my skills and uh, show what I want to say to them. I have to give response to them. And what is my opinion? And everybody has its own opinion in itself. So, yeah, I had tried a lot, but uh, it was not that much easy for me, literally. So I used to uh, stand up on the stage and my, my mind set off. So many, several times it happened to me. But now, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, that I had, uh, uh, you know, started speaking from my classes and, and uh, debates and done so many things uh, on the television programs and uh, written and also in, in the writing. Uh, so I had done uh, so many things that which gave me a confidence from the starting of my career. And now, Alhamdulillah, in, the, uh, in this city, and I have been doing debates in my academy and doing so many uh, extracurriculum activities, which made me look good and which made me, you know, uh, uh, look confident in front of the so many people. And uh, Mr. Naveed also gave me this opportunity to show my some skills to you and uh, to, to to tell you that what I to tell to the entire audience of the globe that what I feel and how does uh, things, you know, uh, I do feel. So yeah, these have uh, been the most, uh, you know, best thing in me that I have changed in my five years. And now I feel more confident. I feel more strong. I feel more uh, you know, uh, on the stage, whatever way I can, uh, I can talk on any topic and uh, I have to prepare before it, but I can uh, literally talk. So thank you so much, sir, for giving me such a wonderful topic. Good attempt, Naman. Great. Uh, wonderful energy. Wonderful. Keep up, keep speaking. Wonderful. Great. So now we have, uh, Puneet, you want to go next or later? Okay. So, Puneet, listen carefully. What question do you want to know the answer to if it will help humanity? What question do you want to know the answer to if it will help humanity? I'll put it in the chat. Yeah, that is the best part of yours. You always help us with your, you post it in the chat, which makes it very easier. I recall reading this powerful quote that the purpose of life is life of purpose. Hello, everyone. It's always easier to follow herd mentality and get lost. And believe me or not, I have fallen into this trap a lot of time. When you're brought up in the southern part of India, there are three career choices. Number one, engineering. Number two, doctor. And number three, failure. And I choose the engineering part. Which was, of course, due because I thought that engineering engineers are the most coolest people in the world. Yeah, what? Who cares about arts, commerce people? I wish I had a different opinion by then. But having said that, as I course throughout my life on this autopilot mode, when I was allowing life to throw punches at me, instead of I trying to throw punches at life, there came an internal realization that I don't know nothing about myself. I hardly know why am I existing in the first place. And I'm sure all of us at one point of time do find this existential crisis as to what am I, what am I, what is my role in the first place on this planet Earth? Why is that divine cosmic force? Uh, what are we in this Earth for? So during this process of losing myself and trying to find myself, thanks to Toastmasters, I found one amazing mentor called Distinguished Toastmaster Raku, who said, and I quote, that all of your life problem, all of your humanity's problem, all of life challenges, complex problem can be found in this one book, which I want to show it to you called Bhagavad Gita. And I've just started reading a couple of weeks and I must say that I wish I could have gotten this book probably the time when I was 10 years or probably as earlier as I can, because there are a lot of life solutions which are there in it. So 
if there is one thing which i want to if i as a human if i want to know the answer if it helps humanity and i think the answers are already there fellow toast masters we don't need to go out and explore something we don't need to recreate and reinvent the wheel the answers are already there there are sages who use their intuitive powers and who gave us the way to wisdom but due to a lot of distraction due to other priorities due to cacophony cacophony of voices around somewhere i feel that we have forgot to listen to our own inner voice and reading books like bhagavad gita which i am doing right now bible quran can give us an opportunity for us to know ourselves and which can help us humanity in that process back to you table topic master interesting answer well attempted punit so interesting question so good good well done so we have so sujit i can take you towards the end no issues no so you are the timer so no so noman are you there oh no navid yes sir uh, am i audible yes you are audible navid your topic is what standing between you and your greatest dream what standing between you and your greatest dream navid thank you very much uh, table topic master team umar and uh, people around the world well uh, from many days and from many months i am thinking the same as uh, tm punit said i am looking for my purpose and uh, why i am born and what i have to do in my life uh, in this world whatever uh, i work in i serve to the company uh, to the community and the world so this is the thing i want to know and the greatest dream would be this that thing that i achieve this thing and i am doing and working on it in this way i found some clues from like quran and from uh, uh, listening to different kind of motivation speakers and different uh, people and they uh, like there was one person he was saying that look after many things look after uh, many things at a time not focus on one thing you can learn from philosophy you can learn from psychology you can you can learn from many different fields and see that what inspire you and what motivates you and and which thing make you more comfortable doing uh, work on many hours and if if you may, uh, means you don't feel anything when uh, even you put many hours to it and this thing would be the thing uh, that can serve you the purpose in in the purpose and there were many words like inspiration like uh, like even the taste even the smell you can smell the rose you can even taste the food in a way that you feel that why it is created then you may feel that why i am created so thank you very much ever dog master great thoughts <laughs> navit wonderful everybody is such a uh, motivation speaker today huh? a lot of, i can i can know a lot of people like not from the surface from the inside what they are thinking oh, i am reading you all great so so now we have himanshu is there himanshu opadhyay yeah. hello everyone so himanshu your topic is where are you if, yes your topic is if failures are the best teacher why is it bad to fail if failures are the oh. best teacher why it is bad to fail I, it's really very nice topic yes failure are the best teacher but everyone <laughs> do not like to fail somehow but you know failure is the best thing that we can embrace we take lessons from our failures we take lessons for the future perspective as well failure it is the most one of the most important thing of our life if we don't fail we cannot find we cannot examine the true value of success what is success is success it is a step beyond the failure 
lot of failures 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 then finally we got succeed and that day we hopefully find the real meaning of what is failure day by day we proceed we fail we learn we take experiences with our past experiences we indulge some changes in our day to day activities we involve in certain kind of activities and we take we participate we learn and by it is the accumulation of all the results and finally we got succeed one day and that is the day that really really inspire us that we have made a mark in our life for our parents for our teachers and we really can say that it is the result of the upbringing our hard work the really relatively the perseverance of our life that that take us to here failure it is really really a important thing but it is also a very disappointing thing that one of where that many person have been that that is a part of every person you know when i went to interview i have been to so many interviews in my life but i failed but finally i got recommended from ssb from one of the fsb centers and that day i realized that yes that was not the failure it is a part of a success failures are we indulge it it is a part of our success thank you and over to you good thoughts evanshu yes from climbing from one failure to another failure we learn and grow so pragya is there pragya so prakya your topic is do you resent others whenever you give in to their wishes do you resent others when you give in on in, in to their, their wishes i put it in the chat a life is an accumulation of the things that we do for others and the one biggest thing that we always do for our loved ones for the people around you and me are giving in to their wishes i can totally relate it to my every single day life as soon as i get up in the morning because my son wants me to be in his class even if i am not willing to wake up and do things i will still do it because he wishes to do it even if i am not in a mood to cook anything but because my husband wants to eat something particular i will give in to his wish even when i am dead tired at night but if my daughter comes and tells me i want to sleep on your hand i give in to her wish and sometimes i feel that our whole day our whole life is all about a balance that we do between our wishes and others so i would say i am not somebody who resent others whenever i give to their wish but i always weigh whether those people are that much important to me that i can keep myself my feelings my needs aside for them or not because one thing which i have always felt is that if you keep giving in to your to people's wishes this world is a wishful world they would want you to give whatever you have to them and still not be happy with it yes those kind of people i do resent who don't care about what i feel who don't care about how i want to be who don't care about my happiness but for the people whom i love intensely who are an integral part of my life like my mom my family my loved ones my friends probably i would never resent them because that's where i am choosing a different form of happiness by fulfilling their wishes i know the happiness which i feel when my daughter hugs me at that point of time that doesn't cause resentment at all so my dear friends the only thing which we need to decide over here is to know to give up for whose wishes and to keep your wishes in front of you if we know it right we'll do it right over to you good thoughts so prakya i will not reset anybody at all class topic plus <laughs> everybody is a lesson for us some people in our lives so we learn from them the bad experiences also so we should not resent them so next we have 
वेफा वेफा आर यू देयर so good morning sangeet of masters okay wait i have to turn off my camera sorry am i visible am i visible am i audible right okay good morning sangeet of masters and dear guests so my topic is what is something that i gave up on which meant a lot to me so i think uh, i'm going to start with an example from this january so when quarantine started i was so bored that i started one of my new hobbies it's called editing so i edited videos i edited photos and different kinds of editing i was always open to explore new kinds of editing and i used to have an account on instagram and there i used to post my edits and as something like 1000 followers it wasn't much but i was still growing and recently in january uh i had some bad influence i made some friends here and they were kind of a bad influence on me and i was talking to them from my account and well let's just say that my parents found out found out and well they weren't mad at me for hanging out with them they were just mad at the language they used and all that stuff so they weren't really mad at me either they were just trying to make me understand what i had done wrong and i feel like i really get that i mean like i really learned that i really learned from that and because of that i had to give up on editing and this made me realize that everything has consequences and i feel like if i have, would have not gotten into that company i would have still been able to edit and i'm still going to start again but it would be different than the last time i'll be i'll try to be more responsible and most of all i'll try to keep that in mind that everything has consequences thank you and over to you to table top of mm, good thoughts and wonderful start again and do better inshallah sure. great great so now we have who is the next target prashant are you there yes umar i am here yes prashant yeah. your topic what are you willing to go the extra mile for what are you willing to go the extra mile for prashant Yeah. Yeah. Greetings to all my global impromptu friends, and uh, thanks, uh, Umar, for such a nice topic. So the extra mile, uh, which you want to, you know, pursue what what you like for. Like in my career, I just I belong to very small villages. I never think what should be my career, maybe. without thinking i started my career uh, and studying even cl- till class 12 i have no idea what i have to do in my future and actually generally my all of brothers are like engineer and doctors but i don't think what i have to pursue for but i purchased lots of engineering book lots of to just you know just part of the part of engineering uh, competition but actually not like uh, not Uh, uh not went through that you know because i was not liking i was not through how to you know prepare for them then suddenly after graduation i think the i have my life has a purpose and suddenly you know uh, generally when uh, my elders brothers asked to read some books or you read you are not reading then i am reading some kind of comic book or kind of a story book uh behind the uh, 
uh, except reading them in competitive examination. But suddenly, when after graduation, I found you know I have to do something, and then suddenly my life got changed. So then I think I have to pursue for my career, which actually everyone wants to be, and even my I indulge myself in that area. So after that, I work hard day and night, and the and I change myself and I reach a very good level, which I think for earlier, I think I was not a very good person. I can't do much in my career, uh, but with the hard work or with my persuasion, I'm able to get what I desire for at this moment and further persuasion, persuasion, persuasion for the, my next uh, goal for the same. Over to you, TM Great thoughts. Wonderfully attempted question. Great thought. So we have with us Sunita ma'am. Are you there? Sunita ma'am was there, I think. She has left. Okay, no issues. We have who is the next one? So Chandrasekhar is there. Chandrasekhar, are you there? Yeah. Hi. Am I audible and visible clearly? Yes, Chandrasekhar. Your topic is. If you would have not been born, what would be different about the world? If you were not, if you would have not been born, what would be different about the world? I put it in the chat. We always think this universe, this universe, this earth has been existing for millions of years and yet you are born for 70 years, that's it. Yet you take so much pride that we tend to forget that 100 years down the line, our names will be forgotten if we don't look into ourselves, if we don't realize ourselves. So my topic if I would not have been born, what the world would have been different? Let's think if I can contribute. Because if there is no contribution from my life, then the world would have been as it is without any change. But when I think that, have I made any change in the world? Not at all as of now. Very minute. But yes, a start of it at least is much more better. So. When I'm thinking about this question, it needs to really be thought in well depth. Because let's take an example, 1921, just 100 years down the line, there would have been some guy named Chandrasekhar Patil or someone else who might have had the same life, a average job and aspiration for a bigger life and so on. But that's not what it is. It is being continued. But one thing we need to remember is how can you make a world a better place? So would it have been different if I wouldn't have been born? Yes, chances are it would have been completely different. But if I can contribute it now, I can make it much more different than it was and much more better. So if I would not have been born, I don't think the world would have regretted it. But I would say the world would appreciate it if I can make a difference in it. Over to you, Toastmaster. Wonderful thoughts. Chandresh, Chandrasekhar. Yes, we can all make a difference in the lives of others in one way or other, with our families and all. So Zainab is there, Zainab. Zainab is a late joining, Hello. but she is able to get the chance, lucky. So, Zana, what question I should ask you? Okay, so, so your question is, mm -hmm. are you spending enough time doing the most important thing in your life? Are you doing is the most important thing in your life? Spending the most time doing the most important thing in your life? I put it in the chat. First of all, I would like to wish everyone a very good evening. I hope everyone's doing well. So the topic given to me is, am I spending enough time doing the most important thing in my life? Uh, the answer is, I hope I am. 
I feel life is just such a mixture of up and downs and you don't really know where you're heading to until and unless you get to a destination and you realize, oh, this was where my path was meant to lead me, that you don't realize how fast time is spending. Like, at least for me, I have noticed this. The year 2021, I can't even believe you're almost halfway through it. Like, in five, six more days, we'll be six months by in 2021. This year has been super fast for me, at least. So... I am hoping I spend that time wisely because as we say, time is something which can't be earned. And once that has been spent, there is no reverse back to it. And during this whole process, one thing that I've learned is you can't actually spend time doing the most important things in your life always. You just do what you have to and you prioritize things according to that. Because if you look at it, Everyone is doing something which is most important to them at that moment. It might seem very mundane or not of that much importance, but you're doing it and you're prioritizing it over other things that you have to do in your life that you might think are important because at that moment in time, that's the thing that you needed. For some people, it might be spending time with family. For some people, it might be cozying up in a corner and reading a book. For some people, it might be watching endless TV shows. For some people, it might be going out and working nonstop. So I feel it's like different for different people. For me, I have been spending a lot of time studying, which I'm hoping will pay off to something. Uh, I have been neglecting a lot of important things that I wish I was able to do in my life. But then again, it comes back to priorities that I'm prioritizing this over that because at this moment, I think my me studying is more important than doing other things, which does not make other things any less important, but it's just at this moment, I need to give my undivided attention to a certain aspect of my life rather than focusing all over the place and being a handful for other people. And I think that would be it. Thank you so much. Interesting thoughts there, man. I always say that everything has an opportunity cost, and time also has an opportunity cost. So great. So Naveen sir is there. Naveen sir just join in, and he is the lucky one now. <laughs> Hi, thank you. So Naveen sir, your topic is how do you want people to describe you? Describe you at your funeral. <laughs> uh, how you? How uh, how do you want to be described at your funeral? Hello Toastmasters, there are some things which are so abstract in this world that we can't even think of, of how people would, would really describe me. But let me tell you one thing that uh, it, is, it is said by wise men that the number of people who really turn up in your funeral is highly dependent on the weather that day. <laughs> so another thing is that well, it, it would be something which would be so insignificant for me that who really turns up or who really do, doesn't turn up or who says what behind my back and when I'm not there. So do I really need to worry about that? Of course not. Of course, it, it's, it, but nevertheless, I would like to be remembered as a person uh, who, who, who didn't do anything, uh, anything bad for anyone, anyone and who wouldn't curse me behind when I'm not there around. But nevertheless, you should not live a life in this manner. That is, what will people think of me behind my back when I'm not there? Because if we start living our life this way, we can never uh, uh, enjoy ourselves or, or, we, or we, can, we can never do anything significant. So the thing is that no matter what you do in life, there will always be people who are going to crib and criticize on you at any point of, or, or point of time. So the thing is, when the weather is good at your place, enjoy the weather right now and don't worry what the weather will be once you're not there or, and, 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 and once, uh, because everything depends on the legacy that you really leave behind towards your posterity. So concentrate on that to inculcate and imbibe good habits to your youngsters rather than thinking about what, what people will think about you once you're not there. Over to you, Toastmaster of the Day. Interesting. <laughs> Toastmaster of the Day, yay! <laughs> Toastmaster of the Day. <laughs> So sometimes the easy questions may seem easy, but they are difficult to answer and you have to try and come up with the thoughts. So that is example. Last we have, second last we have Sujit. Sujit is there, our timer. Who will take the timer role for Sujit? Anybody want to? Or he can time himself. Uh, Naveed can do. Naveed, okay, no issues. So Naveed. So we'll have Naveed. 
So, Sujit, are you ready? Sujit, can you unmute? Yeah. Uh, so, Sujit, your topic is why are you afraid of being true to yourself when others are around? Why are you afraid of being true to yourself while, while others are around? You know, fear is something that is just not limited to being judged. It comes, for me, there are a lot of more areas of domain where fear kind of makes me crippling and parallel. So if you, I don't really kind of get bothered or bogged down what other people thinks, what other people kind of judging me on whatever, what I truly focus on, what can I do? And that's my core focus always remains. Wherever you are, whether it's a work or whether you are in a society or within the family, how can you make each person a little more happy, a little more motivated? And that's what the difference I would like to bring. Although I'm a work in progress, still working on it, but that's what I want to be and kind of that. Not getting bogged down by what are things, what are people. Wonderful thoughts, Sujit. Great. So we have just one more person joined in Shivani. So then we'll go to the team. Shivani, are you there? Yes, I am here. I just saw the message, so joined it. Okay, Shivani, you want to try a topic or you can open the video? Okay, Shivani, are you there? Yes. So you, you can open the video or you want to do it without video? Uh, sorry, pattern, the voice was breaking, so I wasn't able to hear. Would you please repeat? So your okay. Your topic is: Have you matured because of challenges or because of enjoyment, enjoyable moments in your life? Have you matured because of uh, challenges or because of the enjoyable moments in your life? I'll put it in the chat. When the things about matured, then there are some experiences that we have to live with it. And when you pass through the different phases of your life, you will see different things. Sometimes they are happy moments, sometimes they are low moments. And the special thing about the life is that every moment teach you. Either you take it as a challenge or you take it as a fun. It's all about our perception. If we take it as a fun, then it would be easy to pass those moments. But if you, some moments are like, which we have to go through, like some moments, when we uh, lose our near ones or some moment when we are uh, just hopeless or we don't have any control over those things, like very close person is in the hospital, then you just do take care of them or you have to pray for them. There, is some, there are some moments where you have, you will face that you will slowly or gradually turning mature. Uh, I remember a personal experience of mine when uh, I lost my dad and I was in ninth class. So at that moment, I was the one who go uh, who went to my mother and I said, Mom, uh, let's feel like Papa went to the Meret for a few days. Maybe after a few days, we will feel that uh, he is not with us. And at that moment, when everyone is crying near me, I was the one who is speaking this thing at the very next day. So the things will gradually change and they make you uh, more and more mature. And I feel uh, being mature, it's better to enjoy the things. Uh, when you know the good thing is this and the bad thing is this, when you start differentiating good and bad, then the things will gradually take you to the best level. Thank you. Wonderful thoughts, Shivani. I get to know you. Through this question also so everybody i'm getting to know reading everybody <laughs> so, so now last but not only gta mamjad yes sir so, gta mamjad your topic is what aspect of your personality still needs improvement 
what aspect of your personality still needs improvement? Thank you so much, Mr. Topics Master. What aspect of my personality still needs improvement? I believe uh, we all know and we would agree that we all need improvements every point in time. And all aspects of my life need improvement every point in life. If not for me, at least for you. If it's not for us, at least for somebody whom I'm meeting for the first time. So every person has a different experience with every single other person. For some people, I'm a brilliant person. For some people, I'm an amazing soul. Some people, I'm a complete waste of energy, waste of time. So this is how life is all about with every single person. People are same, but they are hated by people. They are loved by people. So where do you confuse yourself? Now, let me just give you a quick example. When I started my very first job in Pakistan, I was the graphic designer. In front of my boss, that point in time, one customer comes, he says, where did you find this gem of a person? He is supposed to be somewhere in a top agency in New York. And I'm just quoting his words exactly. And you are so lucky. And I felt good. And right next day, another person comes. And in front of my boss, again, he says, where did you find this person? He doesn't know. He doesn't have brain. He doesn't know how to use colors. Can you believe that same person and two different conversations, two different experiences? So sometimes we connect with some people. Sometimes we don't connect with people. It's a completely reality. It's a complete reality. So it's all right. And to me, yes, I need improvement in all aspects of my life. Every point in time, we are not perfect at all. We are not born perfect and we will never be perfect. But yes, we are much better than yesterday. We will be better tomorrow compared to our past, our present today. So this is what I understand about this topic, ladies and gentlemen. Do not take things seriously. If people praise you, it's all right. This is their perception, their viewpoint. And if people hate you, it's completely all right. This is their understanding, this is their perception. You have to be yourself wherever you are. Keep yourself, pure soul, do your best, do your abilities, that's it. This is what I do. I always preach what I do in my life, or at least I try my best. Thank you so much. I need improvement. Thank you so much for helping me, improving myself every single day. Back to you, sir. Wonderful, very motivating and inspiring as usual. Great thoughts. So with this, we are coming to end of the session. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, Toastmaster Umar, for a brilliant session. Who would like to give a topic to Toastmaster Umar now? No, nobody. <laughs> okay, Naveed Siddiqui has raised his hand. Naveed will, will give a very easy topic, I know. <laughs> revenge time, Naveed, revenge oh. time. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. So, your uh, TM Uma, your topic is why good things sometimes are wiped out under the carpet. Why good things are sometimes wiped wiped out under the carpet? Because they are good things, not the great things. Why settle for good when you can be great? Come on. See, the biggest enemy of growth is good. Something that good you settle for. Something that less. Okay, this is normal and average life that you settle for. Don't do that. You can achieve more things. You can do great things in your life. Awesome things. And fantabulous things in your life. So go for that. We settle for average. Huh? We are having a one month, uh, every month salary are we getting a normal mediocre life that we are le leading. So... See, live a life that you don't need to think, hide things under the carpet. There is no carpet at all. Throw away that carpet. Don't put anything, hide everything in beneath that. So go for greatness. Go for success, real success. Do things that you cherish and are important in your life. And keep 
improving your targets. It's not that, oh, I have reached, oh, I want to be that like person. There is a person who has been, has achieved more than that person also. Go for that. Keep modifying your goals. Keep improving upon that. It's not that, oh, I have settled for this thing. No, that is not end of the road. There are so many ways. There are so many roads that you can travel. But don't settle for anything good. Always go for the great thing. Because those are the most important things. Because I will tell you one thing. If you are settling for something good, it means you are limiting yourself. You are stopping yourself from growth. That's when you have to decide. Okay, no, this is not me. This is not end of my journey. Till the time that I'm breathing, I need to improve. I need to grow from good to great greatest or oh, excellent awesome whatever the uh, uh, entire adjectives that you have in the vocabulary you have you have to pick up don't settle for just good keep doing your best and improving upon it and piling your you know, make a huge like you can say make a great building of yourself building your build your own success you can build and your building of success doesn't have no unlimited floors don't settle for fourth floor, fifth floor, sixth floor. You can have countless floors that you want to have. You can make the world's biggest building that you want. And that building is of your success. Over to you, Jarendra. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Nirmit Siddiqui, for giving topic to Tosma Sumer. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to Tosma Sujit J for timing report. Tosma Sujit, over to you. Yeah, uh, so I'll read out the timing report for all. Absolutely, you can go ahead. And first of all, kudos to all the speakers here. Everybody kind of spoken more than one minute, 30 seconds, and on an average, two minutes, which is just awesome. And everybody just put a hand at your back and just say, good job, Ben. So I, I will uh, read out uh, our timing for each of the speakers individually. Toastmaster Fraser, Madam, three minutes, 50 seconds. Toastmaster Sushant, one minute, 41 seconds. Toastmaster Jesse, two minutes, 10 seconds. Toastmaster Madhuri, one minute, 53 seconds. Toastmaster Babu, two minutes, 17 seconds. Toastmaster Tawaz, two minutes, six seconds. Toastmaster Mohammed, one minute, 32 seconds. Toastmaster Noman, two minutes, 12 seconds. Toastmaster Punit, two minutes, 21 seconds. Toastmaster Naveed, 2 minutes 23 seconds. Toastmaster Himangshu, 2 minutes 10 seconds. Toastmaster Pragya, 2 minutes 30 seconds. Toastmaster Samridhi, 2 minutes 25 seconds. Toastmaster Prashant, 1 minute 57 seconds. Guest Chandrasekhar, 2 minutes 1 second. Toastmaster Jana, 2 minutes 26 seconds. Toastmaster Naveen, 1 minute 48 seconds. Myself, 1 minute 30 seconds. The lowest amongst all of you. Toastmaster Shivani, 1 minute 15 5 seconds, Toastmaster DTM MZ, 2 minutes 59 seconds, Toastmaster Umar, 2 minutes 47 seconds. Great job done. What a wonderful day it was. Back to you, DTM MZ. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Jeet. I really appreciate for your undivided attention. It is. It was a great critical role, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for these two gentlemen, Toastmaster Sujit J and Toastmaster Umar Farooq for conducting this successful show. A big hand for both of you, ladies and gentlemen. All right, with that power vested in me as a host of this meeting, I adjourn the meeting. Stay blessed, keep your society safe. Bye-bye.